Amen na basyo na. <laughs> okay, mga voicing na yun. Praise the Lord. Well, we are continuing po with our series entitled po, Lies or Promises. So it's all about learning to uh, decide well po sa buhay natin. Life is all about decisions. Amen po ba? Life is all about our decisions. And some of our decisions may not be that important, pero meron tayong mga major decisions in life that can make a uh, a lot of difference po sa mangyayari sa buhay natin and we need to be more discerning. Kaya itong topic po natin for this month of July is entitled Lies or Promises. And the reason why we combine them is because, okay, ang lies po talaga do not come to us in the form of lies. Kasi if they do come to us in the form of lies, madali natin ma, you know, ma-reject yun kasi lies eh, di ba? They, what, our problem is that yung mga lies ni Satan come to us in the form of promises. Okay? They sound good. Okay? Just in case hindi nyo alam, Satan do not or does not tempt people by using horrible and scary images, you know. Hindi nyo sinasabi sa akin, sumunod ka sa akin, kundi ano, pag sumunod ka, papatayin kita. You know? So, Satan doesn't uh, use that kind of tactic. Instead, ang ginagamit niya ng paraan is that he tells us things that sound very convincing, very wonderful, very nice, very good. At yun ang problem natin. Yung lies, they come to us, not in the form of lies, but they come to us in the form of promises. And since yung decision-making natin ay based sa mga iniisip natin, sometimes hindi natin alam na may nagdi-decide tayo, may mga iniisip tayo na hindi talaga katotohanan, hindi talaga promises ni Lord, but more like promises of Satan sa atin. And there are many people na nasi-shipwreck ang kanilang buhay, na papariwara sila simply because hindi sila equipped to make the right kind of decision making or yung discernment na tinatawag natin. And this is what we're after itong buwan na ito. I'm trying to teach you how to become more discerning po sa mga naririnig natin, sa uh, puso natin, sa isip natin because that's where it all starts. Bago tayo gumawa na kahit anong decision, we're, first we are thinking about it. Amen? Di ba? Before you make any kind of decision, iniisip mo yon, And you have your own reasoning sa mind mo. You have your own uh, reason or dahilan why you want to do something. Bakit gusto mo siyang sagutin? Bakit ayaw mo siyang sagutin? Bakit gusto mo yung trabaho na yon at hindi yung trabaho na to? Bakit gusto mo lumipat sa bahay na yon at hindi dito? Ganyan, you know? Bakit gusto mo mag-abroad or whatever? All of those decisions start off with thoughts or thinking sa mind natin. And what we need to understand is that uh, minsan, Satan, because he knows kung anong mga weaknesses natin, sometimes he uses, you know, the very things that would attract us or cause us to say, oh nga, yan, yan ang gusto ko. Pero ang purpose niya talaga is to deceive us. So we need to be uh, guarded, we need to be aware, and we need to have the faith na once sabihin sa atin ng Panginoon, that's a lie, let's re- reject that, at kapag sinabi ng Panginoon, here's my promise to you, here's the truth, doon tayo pumunta. That's the key to a successful kind of living in this world. Amen? Yung wisdom ng ating Panginoon. And we started off by defining yung ibig sabihin ng lies. And I said, lies are promises that contradict God's purposes. Or to be more precise, uh, lies are false promises that contradict uh, God's purposes. Okay? So let me add that word, False. It sounds like a promise, pero actually deception siya kasi false nga eh, di ba? So, akala mo lang maganda kasi naiisip mo, it lines up with what you want, di ba? But hindi mo alam na tinitwist lang ni Satan yun o dinideceive ka lang niya. And so, yan ang definition ng lies. Lies are false promises. And we look at Second Peter chapter 1, nakita natin na kapag promise ni Lord John, it's always related sa kanyang will sa atin o purpose niya sa atin. He does not just give us the Word of God para may memoria tayong verse. He gives the Word of God to us so that we may participate in the divine nature so we can experience the purpose of God in our lives. Kaya nga sabi ko, the best way para malaman mo kung isang bagay kasi nungalingan, just play the movie. Okay? Play the movie. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin pag may iniisip ka, just, just, just imagine in yourself, okay, if I do this, ano susunod na mangyayari? Ano susunod na mangyayari? No? And if you play the movie all throughout hanggang sa ending at nakita mo doon sa credits, you know, di ba? Pagkatapos na ng pelikula, may credits, ganyan. Nakita mo, directed by Satan. Then you know. Okay? This is not God's will for me. In other words, kung yung iniisip mo, pag pinlayout may movie, mukhang mapapalayo ka kay Lord, mukhang 
mawawalan ka ng time to, uh, to, to nurture yung relationship mo with God. Kung pag pinlayout mo yung movie, parang ang magiging ending, mawawala ka ng time sa family mo, ma-auto-focus ka, magmumuha kang pera. Well, you know, I don't care how good it is right now sa tingin mo. It's not God's will. Amen? It is not God's will na mapalayo ka sa Kanya. It's that simple. It's not God's will na yung ugali mo ay hindi magbago at magmukha kang parang satanic. You know? It is God's will for you to become more Christ-like. Can I hear an amen? amen. So whatever it is na narinig mo sa, sa puso mo, sa tenga mo, na ang patutunguan niya is that you will become more and more in tune with God's purpose in your life, yun ang dapat mong pupuntahan. Amen? Because that is God's will for your life. And if, if, if you are hearing something na parang patungo sa kabilang direksyon, na pag inisip mo yung consequences, mukhang ang ending, mas lalo kang mawawala ng time sa relationship mo with the Lord, lalo kang man- manunuyo spiritually and all of that, then that's a warning for you. Don't go in that direction. Amen? It is not God's will for you. Kahit ang ganda, ganda ng trabaho, ganda ng sweldo, ang pogi niya, ang ganda niya, I don't care. It is not God's will for your life. Amen? Alright, so we're continuing with that. And right now, what we want to do is we want to go to uh, uh, a passage of Scripture that is very significant in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is found in Matthew 4. And by the way, yung video na pinanood nyo, uh, that is the Luke version ng temptation. Uh, that's why yung order niya is different from what we're going to take up uh, in this series. Uh, po, uh, pangalawang uh, temptation, yung tukos sa kingdoms of this world. Pero sa Matthew, it's the last temptation. So, okay, we're going to look at Matthew 4, uh, verses 1 to 11, bilang basihan natin for the remaining Sundays of this month. Okay? So, wag kang absent Baka matemp ka ni Satan. So, sabi sa katabi mo, wag kang absent Baka matemp ka ni Satan. Ayan. Tapos sabi mo, wag kang magyaya ng iba. Kasi ginagamit ka ni Satan. I'm just kidding. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's go. All right. Uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray, Paul. Let's ask the Lord to be with us today. Makinig po kayo maigi because this will help you sa mga decisions na kailangan niyo gawin. Heavenly Father, it is your will and purpose na huwag kami maligaw, huwag masira yung life namin, huwag kami mapunta sa mga sitwasyon sa buhay na makakasama sa amin o sa family namin o sa mga mahal namin sa buhay. It's your will and purpose for us to experience life in all its fullness and you have given us your word, you have given us your wisdom para doon kami pupunta, doon kami makikinig. So teach us, Panginoon, how to be more discerning sa pang-araw-araw because there are many, many things na narinig namin that sound good Pero in reality, Panginoon, would only lead to disaster. So, Panginoon, today, we open our hearts to you. Speak to us, Panginoon. Gamitin mo po ako. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lahat tayo magsabi ng malakas na amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Well, uh, the other night, pinasok na naman kami ng ahas. Mahilig pumasok ang ahas sa bahay namin. And I'm not referring to RLCC members, of course. I'm, I'm talking about real snakes, okay? Now, <laughs> you know, aminin ko sa inyo, medyo mahina ang loob ko sa mga ahas. Uh, malakas ang loob ko. Pag uh, ipis, uh, walang, kahit na magsigawa kayong lahat, ah, ipis! You know, ako para ipis, durugin. <laughs> so, ipis yan. Gagamba, no problem sa akin yan. Medyo kinakabahan ako ng konti pag gagamba kasi ang laki, eh, di ba? No? Lala, pag maliligo ka, bigla nalo sa kisame, pag, you know, Nakakatakot ang kote. Pero kaya ko pa rin yun. Pero ahas, medyo ibang usapan na yung ahas. And so, uh, the other night, I'm not sure, the other two nights ba yun, uh, may ahas doon sa, sa banyo namin. Na, naka doon siya sa mismong parang malapit sa salamin, you know. Ang nauna nakakita yung, yung wife ko, ahas, ahas, sabi ni Pidgey, ahas. So kami naman, ahas, ahas, you know. So, nagkagulo kami sa bahay and... Uh, you know, to make the long story short, sabi namin, Paul, Paul, you know. So, si, si Paul lang inan namin. Uh, uh, <laughs> At first, gusto namin tawagin siya si Brother Ed. Kasi si Brother Ed po, yung, yung tatay ni Sister Swanee, talaga kumakain ng ahas po yun. Talagang kakaibang tao yun. Pero he's not available uh, at that time. So sabi ko, ano gagawin natin? So ahas, ahas. So to make the long story short, I did, this is to affirm uh, Brother Paul. Ha? Kasi the last time nagkaroon ng ahas sa bahay namin, libalita ko lang naman, wala ako doon. Si Brother Paul, medyo, ano, ano yun nga, ganun. Um, uh, <laughs> 
Nahirapan siya, in other words, nahirapan siya. At uh, wala ako doon, nahirapan siya kung ano yung mga binato niya. Ewan ko, di ko alam kung ano ginawa niya. But, uh, so, at this particular time, in-affirm ko ngayon, in-affirm ko ngayon, I'm telling you the, the true story, si Brother Paul lang ano, medyo macho sa amin nung araw na yun, you know? Pumunta siya sa banyo, sabi niya, asa na? Pero medyo napipigil-pigilan siya ng konti. Nasa na, gano'n. You know? so, ako naman lang sa likod niya, Paul, you know, tuloy mo yan. Kaya, kaya natin yan, okay? So, <laughs> Let's make the long story short. Uh, uh, so, paano ba na, paano namin kukunin yung ahas? Okay, apparently parang tulog siya, okay? So, naisip ni Brother Paul gumawa ng plastic, okay? Tapos, naisip niya, ano, okay, okay, paano gagawin natin? So, kumuha, kumuha, ko, ng ba- kumuha ko ng bakal na gano'n para itutulak niya yung ahas para malalaglag doon sa plastic, okay? So, at first, ang late ng bunga nga ng plastic. Sabi ko, Paul, you know, sa pagkaintindi ko, kailangan malaki dapat yan. So, you know, laki niya yung plastic and... Uh, Anyway, so tutulak niya na eh matagal na matagal nang hindi nagba-basketball si Brother Paul. Basketball player 'yun eh. Okay? So eh, oh, mahina siya sa geometry o physics o whatever. Kaya nung ginano niya, ito yung butas sa iba na laglag yung ahas. Okay? So pag laglag ng ahas, nagising po siya tumayo ang kanyang ulo. So sabi ko, Paul, kaya-kaya mo 'yan. Ituloy mo yung ano mo, yung ginagawa mo. I, I affirm you in Jesus name. I'm here to support you. Uh, you know, empowering, you know, kailangan encouragement, okay? Uh, anyway, so nagkagulo kami lahat, hindi namin alam gagawin namin. So sabi ni PG, Martillo, Martillo, so, Martillo, sa, nasa na Martillo? Alam mo, pag gano'n pala kinakabangka, di mo lang kung saan nakalagay lahat ng mga bagay. So, uh, Martillo, Martillo. So anyway, na-produce namin yung Martillo, tapos binigay namin kasi kay Brother Paul, Brother Paul, yan ang armas, okay? So si Brother Paul, okay, sabi niya, <laughs> Okay. Ipakala mo, ipakala mo. <laughs> okay. Finally, pinalo niya. Tuhog, hindi tinamaan yung ulo. Tumakas yung ahas. Sabi ko, ah! So, lang yung magic ko, pupunta yun sa sala, sa, sa kwarto namin. Habang natutulog ako, pasok sa tenga ko, lalabas sa kapila. Sorry, sana yung mga na-imagine ko. Sabi ko, paluin mo, paluin mo. Anyway, pinalo niya, tinamaan mga kapatid. Toing, talaga. Nakonyat yung ano, yung, yung ahas, ano. Pero sa ilagay niyo lang yung plastic. So, ilagay sa plastic. Diri-diri kami. Plastic. <laughs> Awas, binigay namin kay Pastor Regina. Sorry, Pastor Regina. Akin na yung martilyo. Akin na yung martilyo. <laughs> Sorry na yung PG. Ano mo? Ako bahala, ako bahala. So, pumunta ron sa labas ng bahay namin. Tapos, nakita niyo gumagalaw yung katawan. Tug! You know? Tapos, nakita niyo gumagalaw yung buto. Tug! You know? So, sa madaling sa tan, nawala ang pagkaahas niya, mga kapatid. Nag, nag-disappear po. Dati po, ah, siya. Ngayon po, pizza pie na. Okay? <laughs> That's the reason I married my wife. <laughs> Kasi na-forsee ko na na papasukin kami na ah, So I was looking for a woman who can kill snakes. Okay? Maraming pa siya ibang kapasidad na hindi ko nasasabihin sa inyo. But anyway, you know, every time na napag-uusapan si Sita, katulad kanina sa film, di ba? Ah, uh, you know, na imagine natin lagi na may ahas. Okay, and and siyempre may mansanas, wala well, lagi yung kombinasyon ahas and mansanas. Although, you know, uh, sa Bible naman hindi natin alam kung mansanas talaga 'yun o santol 'yun. We don't know the classing fruit 'yun. Pero usually associated kay Satan yung yung ahas. And you know, to, to tell you frankly, kung ganyan lang ka simple pag nakita ka, oh, si Satan, kada mo ahas. Ah, pupukin lang ni Pastor Reggie na 'yan. Tapos na 'yan. Our problem is that oftentimes, you know, Satan Uh, well, doesn't do that. He doesn't appear sa salas natin na bilang ahas. And uh, praise God, hindi nagsasalita. So, wal- walang ganun. But instead, he has a different tactic, no? He influences yung ating mga thoughts. And uh, he gives us ideas sa mind natin. Capable siya to do that. He can, kasi spiritual being siya, so he can speak spiritually through our thoughts. Kasi sa spiritual realm, hindi mo naman kinakailangan ng vocal cords to communicate. Hindi ka tulad sa physical realm, pag gusto ko na kausapin ka lang, paggalawin ko yung vocal cords ko. But spiritually speaking, you know, uh, spirit beings can communicate without vocal cords. Parang katulad mo na ikaw, kahit hindi ka nagsasalita, you can make your hand move. You know, simply by your thoughts. Okay? So spiritually speaking, Satan can actually inject thoughts sa isipan natin. And we think thoughts natin yon. Kasi wala naman, di naman nagpaalam si Satan na, <coughs> excuse me, papasok ko lang yung thoughts ko. You know, he doesn't do that. Instead, we have all kinds of thoughts na mapasok sa isip natin, some of which are not our thoughts, 
Na buti sana kung lahat ng thoughts na naiisip natin are God's thoughts, then we are safe. But sometimes it is Satan's thoughts or the demon's thoughts. Okay? Now in this particular story na ating titingnan, uh, we are not really told kung si Satan ba ay nag-appear as a snake. No? Contrary dun sa uh, napanood natin kanina. Uh, we're not really sure. Na- nothing is said. At least sa Matthew, nothing is said. Kung nag-appear ba siya bilang ahas. Okay? Uh, it could be na baka nag-appear siya like this, you know, or maybe like this, so hindi natin alam. But what we do know is that nagkaroon ng conversation at nagkaroon ng temptation. And the reason why we want to focus on, on this particular series of temptations kasi I want us to understand yung tactic or technique ni Satan in trying to deceive us. And as we look at the, these three categories ng temptations, they represent you know, all kinds of temptations that we all go through. Okay? So, now, as we begin looking at this uh, passage, actually, maikli lang naman yung ating titignan, and then we're going to look at uh, a passage in the book of Deuteronomy, just for us to, give, for us to understand kung anong significance itong uh, passage ito. We're just going to look at verses 1 to 4. And here, here's how it begins, ano yung story na ito. Sabi, then, uh, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, the word then means something happened before this. And how many of you have read the book of Matthew? Okay, sino sino nakabasa na? Okay, Matthew, alright? Yung iba, alam nyo ba meron Matthew? You know? Okay, anyway. So, Matthew is, uh, is a book that, uh, uh, you know, presents Jesus as, as the Savior, as the Messiah. And yung before ditong passage na to, uh, pinakita si Jesus being baptized uh, by John the Baptist and then the Holy Spirit coming to to, uh, to descend upon him tapos may voice from heaven this is my own dear son so there was a already a confirmation ika nga, that Jesus was no ordinary person that he was in fact chosen by God for a very important mission na kasunod no pagkatapos on is this one all right which means that uh, you know Matthew is still trying to tell his readers about Jesus being the Messiah. So it's really all about, you know, the desire of Matthew na ipakilala si Jesus as the one promised by God simula pa ng Old Testament. Okay? Now, to prove yung identity ni Jesus bilang Messiah para siya ang pagkatiwalaan ng mga tao, the Bible says that He was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. Which means talagang God was the one involved in this particular incident. Hindi ito parang ordinaryo lamang na incidente. But rather, God Himself was ikanga sovereignly making this happen. Okay? And He was led into the desert. And this reminds, yung mga tao nagbabasa ito, this reminds actually the experience of Israel in the desert then a long, long time ago, kung saan ang Israel naman failed to really obey and trust God. So instead of being ika nga ang Israel kasi is tawag sa kanila the son of God by the way okay ang tawag sa Israel is son of God nagfail sila sa desert they started complaining whining and everything they they sin against God so in bis na ma, ma ano sila mag, mag, mag glorify nila sa Lord when they were in the desert they failed miserably okay as the son of God now here comes Jesus ngayon and He is considered to be the Son of God. And He's now going to reverse that. He's now going to go through the same experience. Kaya lang hindi 40 years, kasi 40 years ang Israel. Siya 40 days lang. Okay? But He's going to go through the same experience. He's going to go into the desert. Just like Israel went into the desert. Okay? So He's going to go into the desert. And ang mismo yung CEO ng, ng, ng impyerno ang lalaban sa kanya. Okay? And this is no ordinary demon, you know, na demonyito dyan, you know. This, this is, si, you know to, si Satan mismo ang harap sa kanya. Because Satan knows that here is the Son of God. He is going to save people from their sins. He would stop this man, okay? He would stop Jesus at all cost. So, kaya dito, very concentrated yung temptation na ginawa niya kay Jesus because ang purpose niya kay Jesus is for Jesus to fail right at the beginning pa. Before he could do anything, bago pa siya mag-preach ng gospel, gusto na ni Satan putuli na agad yung, yung life ni Jesus. 
Alright? In fact, even earlier than that, if you remember, nung kapanganakan niya, you know, Satan incited hero, you know, na patayin yung mga bata. Because, you know, Satan knew, alam ni Satan, that this Jesus will be the person who will save all of us. So Satan wanted to stop him, to kill him, to do everything possible. And right here, dito sa story ang babasahin natin, gagawin din ni Satan yan. He will try his best to stop Jesus. Okay? And gusto ipakita sa atin ni, ano, ni Matthew na si Jesus is truly the king worthy of following and submitting to and believing in and trusting him. Okay? He is the one. In other words, itong mga story ang sunod-sunod sa first few chapters ng book of Matthew are all intended to convince everybody na nagbabasa that this Jesus is the one that we must put our trust in because He is the Messiah. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Later sa katapusan ng book of Matthew, He will stand on the mountain and sabi sa Bible, sabi ni Jesus, All authority has been given unto me. Go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, the book of Matthew is all about presenting Jesus to us as the Messiah. That's why pag pinag-aaralan natin itong passage na to, we must remember that. This is not about parang learning how to overcome temptation lang. This is not about us. It's, it has nothing to do with us talaga actually, directly speaking. It's more like indirectly lang. Directly, it's all about Jesus and how He overcame Satan. Which means that if you put your trust in Jesus, He is telling you you have nothing to fear anymore against Satan. That's why the Bible says, Greater is He who is in me than the one who is in the world. If Jesus is in you, Jesus defeated Satan, therefore you are victorious against the evil one. Amen? Pag nasa iyo si Jesus, you have nothing to fear whatsoever. Tak- takot sa iyo si Satan and all his demons. Amen po ba? So next time na pupunta ka sa mga madidilim na lugar, yun tatakot ka sa mga white lady, you know, stop it! Sabihin mo lang, greater is he who is in me than the one who is in the uh, punong yan. Kung sino man yung nananaba ako dyan, you know? Greater is he who is in me than the white lady. Amen? Sino ba sa inyo natatakot sa mga madidilim na lugar? Di ba? Mas bisa may naamoy kayo, naamoy nyo yung lola nyo. You know, you, just claim your victory in Christ. There is no reason to be afraid. Amen? So itong passage na to is really about Jesus. Itong passage na ito is really telling us na kapag nagtiwala ka kay Jesus, that means you are going to be victorious against the evil one. Amen? And that's a wonderful promise. Kasi siya lang ang tumalo kay Satan. Amen? However, meron secondary application ito. At ang secondary application ito ay makikita natin dito sa, sa story na ito how he actually fought Satan and defeated Satan. And what is interesting is that He did not, Jesus did not defeat Satan by using some extraordinary power na meron siya as God. I mean, He can easily do that. Imagine mo, the Son of God, tinitempt mo. I mean, kung yung Son of God, mag-appear ka lang dyan, baka tingnan lang kita, matutunaw ka na. Right? Because I'm the Son of God. But the Bible is so clear na sinabi na, you know, ni, He emptied Himself. In other words, hindi niya ginamit yung kanyang pagka Instead, He embraced yung limitation of humanity. In other words, dito sa temptation na to, He fought as a man. Hindi siya, he did not fight as a divine being. Hindi niya sinabi kay Satan, wag kang, wag mo ko ganyan eh. You know? He did not, he did not, you know, I can only imagine ko ako yung sign of God, siguro baka sabihin ko lang, okay, maging bulati ka. You know, you know lilit na magiging bulati na si Satan. I, I have the power if I'm the son of God. But Jesus did not fight using divine power. Alam niyo ano ginamit niya? The word of God. And you know what that means? That means you and I, tayo, those of us who follow Jesus, have the same kind of resources. Binigay rin sa atin ang Word of God. Binigay din sa atin ang Scriptures so that we may know the will of God para hindi tayo madideceive na kaaway and we can answer Him back at any time using God's Word. Amen? And in the same way na our Lord and Master was victorious against Satan through the Word of God, tayo rin, we can also be victorious against Satan through the Word of God. Kaya nga napakahalaga that you're growing in the Word of God. 
And I'd like to affirm those who na nag-enroll sa, sa online Bible school. How many of you are here? Nandito ba kayo? Taas nyo lang kamay nyo, mga naka-online. Nag- yeah, oh, praise God for this. Palakpakan natin yung mga yan. Nag-aaral yan sa online Bible school. Alright? And deadline, Monday. So, nagkakaripa silang lahat to try to finish yung kanilang, ano, yung kanilang courses. Okay? But, listen carefully. Pag wala kang Word of God sa buhay mo, if you are not the kind of person na nag-grow sa knowledge of God mo, then very easy ka mapapatumba ni Satan, very easy ka madidisip ni Satan because you don't know how to answer him. You don't know how to defeat his lies. Kasi hindi mo alam yung truth. Now the truth is given to us through the God's word, pero hindi yan pupunta sa heart mo unless you discipline yourself and you let God's word dwell richly in your heart. Gawin mong discipline sa buhay mo to be always, you know, full of God's wisdom and God's word para pag may pumapasok na kasinungalingan sa isipan mo, agad mapapansin mo yung makikita mo agad and you will say, that's not true. Hindi sinabi ni Lord John and you will be able to guard your own heart. Amen? So this particular incident really is something special. It doesn't happen to everybody. So don't be afraid. Hindi ka tutuksuyin ni Satan. You know that? Hindi, hindi kayo naniniwala. Tutuksuhin kayo ng mga demonyo, but not Satan. <laughs> si Kadalasa, kinasabi natin, di ba, gano'n ba, Satan, you know, get deep behind me. You know? Hindi ka pa gano'n ka-importante. Hindi ka ang Messiah. Okay. Malamang isang demonyito lang yan somewhere. So, it's trying to, you know, uh, create difficulty in your life. Okay? Now, this is something unique, different ito. Nevertheless, we can learn a lot from the incident. So, let's move on. Matthew 4, verses 1 to 4 says, After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Which means, the most likely, meron din siyang iniinom kasi he was not thirsty. He was hungry, okay? Uh, because, you know, humanly speaking, hindi ka naman talaga makakasurvive ng 40 days na wala kang tubig, right? Dr. Franco? Correct, okay. But how many of you have experienced fasting? Sino sa'yo nakapag-fasting na? Okay, some of you. Yung iba, hindi pa nag-fasting, you know? We used to do this a lot. I think, but pinatinitindo ko yung mga young people, naglalakihan sila, we need to go into fasting. Okay? Right? Si Jepo, yan, sila, ano, Zep, you know, we need to go into fasting. Siguro mga one year, okay, fasting. Okay, okay. But you know, if you have done fasting, alam mo yung experience ng fasting, sino, sino sino nalipasan na ng gutom? Okay, sino nalipasan na ng gutom? Di ba pag nalipasan ka ng gutom, di ba? Ang hirap, nahihilo ka, di ba? Kasi tingin mo sa mga tao, chicken joy, gano'n, di ba? It's hard, di ba? Pag nalalakpasan ka ng gutom. Imagine 40 days, hindi ko makain si Jesus, you know? Ano ang feeling, ang experience? Nalala ko years ago, nagkaroon kami ng fasting dito sa church. Nandun pa kami sa kabila, no? or saan ba kami? No? Basta we, we went fasting, punta kami sa prayer mountain. And, uh, you know, may dala-dala kaming skyflex, isang lata, pero ang purpose na yung kukuha lang kami pa konti-konti. Pag medyo talaga hindi na kaya, nahihilo na, kukuha ka ng kapiranggot, you know? Para lang just to sustain yung ano mo, para makapag-pray ka. So, one time we were praying, gathering in, a, in one of the rooms, and, you know, inahanap namin yung mga kalalakihan. You know, I, know, I won't name them, kasi baka gulpin nila ako. But, you know, yung mga kalalakihan, mga adult men, nawawala yung mga adult men. Basta nawawala din yung skyflex. Pag nung tinraise namin, nahanap namin na sa isang parang sasakyan, inuupakan yung skyflakes. So sabi ko, alam nyo, fasting tayo, hindi feasting. Magkaiba yun eh. But in this case, you know, when we, we had our prayer fasting, I, I, I experienced yung ganun eh, yung parang talaga nagkakalam yung sikmura mo, nagugutom ka. And Jesus had that experience for about 40 days. So we can more or less imagine what happened here. Sabi sa verse 3, the tempter came to him, now, how in what form in the alam, he came to him and said, If you are the Son of God. Now, Satan knew that Jesus is the Son of God. Kasi narinig niya na yung testimony ng ano eh. May Holy Spirit and may voice of heaven. Narinig niya yun eh, no? So he knew that Jesus was the Son of God. In fact, he knew it as early as yung bago pa ipanganak si Jesus. So, nagbubuntis pala si Mary. Alam niya na that the Son of God is about to be born. So, kilala niya si Jesus. That's why he's going to do everything possible to kill him or stop him. So if you are the Son of God, so ina-assume niya the Son of God si Jesus, tell these stones to become bread. Tell these stones to become bread. Now, I don't know about you, pero, you know, pag medyo nagdi-delirio ka na, minsan yung mga bato, nagiging tinapay na rin sa isipan mo, eh, di ba? And most likely, you know, Jesus was beginning to imagine. And I just, just to ask a, a question, you know, do you think it's hard for Jesus to turn the stone to bread? I don't think so. 
Di ba? Siguro titignan lang yung mga bato, di ba? Bread talk. You know, magiging tinapay na agad yun, di ba? Oo, di ba? Titignan yung mga bato. Julius. Kasi, di ba? Julius. Okay. Hindi ba magiging mga tinapay yun? It's so easy for him. You know, walang, walang problema sa kanya yun. So how could this be a temptation? Alright? Jesus is being tempted. Sabi sa kanya ni Satan, Okay, nagugutom ka, di ba? And I can almost hear, siguro, although hindi naman nakalagay sa scripture, I can almost uh, hear Satan saying, you know, you know, with God, all things possible. Stone, bread, <laughs> chicken, fish. Jesus, come on. Take care of this na. Nag- nakikita na ka na, nahihilo, namumutla ka na, oh. Di ba? Kain ka muna, alright? So what is the problem here? Satan is trying to deceive Jesus about something that most of us usually fall into. Karamihan sa atin are deceived by Satan right in this very aspect of our lives. And I want you to understand kung ano yung nature ng deception dito. It's not as simple as parang, Oy, uh, Jesus, ha? nagugutom ka na, 40 days ka na hindi ko makain. Ito, may mga bato, may maliit na bato, pwedeng ano yan, pandikoko, yun ang malaking bato, pwedeng mona, you know. Just convert it, convert. Napakadali, walang kahirap-hirap. But what was Satan really suggesting? And what is Satan trying to tell us din sa pang-araw-araw natin buhay? Well, to understand, let me introduce you to a person. How many of you know this guy? Well, siyempre, hindi nyo kilala. Hindi ko pa pinapakilala. You know, his name is Abraham Maslow. Okay? Ah, okay. Present ako niya nung binanggit niya sa school. Eh, okay? Si Abraham Maslow is the, okay, uh, scientist or psychologist no na pinag-aralan niya yung mga tao and he's trying to he's trying to understand ano ba yung nature ng human behavior and he he tried looking at different uh, people and meron siyang na discover na you know na pattern sa mga tao and he discovered this so he came up with this uh, hierarchy of needs all right now basically itong theory ni Maslow ganito na ang mga tao daw uh, generally speaking with very little exceptions, usually will try to take care of the lowest level of need. At yung lowest level of need na yun, itinatawag na physiological. Okay? Which means, may kanalaman sa breathing, food, uh, homeostasis. Alam nyo ba yung homeostasis? Uh, okay, buti pa kaya alam nyo yun. Okay, water, uh, sex, uh, sleep, you know, kasama yung sex doon, alright? Uh, sleep. So these are the things na kumbaga parang very basic sa human survival. So sabi ni Maslow, sa kanyang pag-iimbestiga na napakaraming mga tao, he came to the conclusion na karamihan sa mga tao would always focus yung kanilang energy, yung kanilang time, trying to meet that need. At kapag okay na yung need na yun, then they go to the second level of need, which is yung na safety needs. And so it has to do with your security of body, of family, of employment, of health, or of shelter. In other words, pag meron na sila nakakain, they want to make sure na tuloy-tuloy lang yun. Na hindi mawawala. Okay? So, nature ng tao, focus siya doon. And after a while, pag medyo safe na siya, nakatira na siya sa subdivision, may sarili na siyang bahay, hindi na siya papaalisin, you know, medyo peace and quiet na ang buhay niya. Then he begins to think about, you know, love and belonging, like yung friendship, family, sexual intimacy, medyo iniisip-isip yun na yung mga bagay na yan. And kapag okay na rin yung part na yan, then he begins to think about yung kanyang self-worth, yung esteem. He thinks about confidence, achievement, ganyan-ganyan, etc. He begins to think about that. Finally, you know, pag okay na lahat yan, sabi ni Maslow, then and only then, na ang isang normal na tao would think about self-actualization o yung mga bagay na spiritual. Mga bagay na may kinalaman sa, you know, sa, sa aking kaluluwa. Sabi niya, so basically, Maslow is saying, ang isang tao would not think about those higher things hanggang hindi na meet yung kanyang lower needs. Now, this is based on studies na ginawa sa napakarami mga tao. And then, additional studies were made, and they discovered na kapag ang isang tao merong fear, natatakot siya, immediately ang kanyang focus o attention ay sa kanyang survival needs. Now, basically, what this chart is telling us is that normally tayong lahat, iniisip natin yung survival natin ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat. 
yung, yung buhay natin, yung kakainin natin, yung saan tayo matutulog, you know, ito yung mga importante sa atin. And sometimes when, when somebody is parang telling us to uh, give attention sa mga spiritual na bagay sa buhay natin, maybe you have a friend, a relative, who's telling you na, uy, mag-Bible study naman tayo, uy, mag-enroll naman tayo doon sa equip, uy, ano naman tayo, you know, sa mind mo, you're thinking, uh, ilangan unahin ko muna yung mga practical na bagay. I mean, anong kakainin ng pamilya ko? Mamamatay sila. That's how you're thinking. You know, I have to take care of needs. And, and, and kailangan asikasuhin ko muna ikabubuhay ng pamilya ko. Isn't that practical? Masama ba yun? Siyempre, kailangan unahin ko muna yung pamilya ko, di ba? And whenever I'm talking to a person and trying to share, uh, you know, about salvation and the gospel, sasabihin sa akin ng tao, Pastor, alam mo, darating din tayo dyan. You know, how many of you have said this or, or say this every now and then? You know, darating tayo dyan. O, halikas, halikas sa ano natin, mga training programs natin. <coughs> Pastor, <coughs> uh, huwag ka magilala. Uh, darating tayo dyan, okay? Kailan tayo darating, kaibigan? Pastor, darating. Darating tayo dyan, okay? Kailan ka magbibigay ng atensyon sa spiritual life mo? Kailan mo haasikasuhin yung paglago mo sa Panginoon? Kailan mo bibigyan ng atensyon kung ikaw ba ay uh, lagiging faithful disciple na? Ikaw ba ay nakakapag-serve na kay Lord? Kailan mo bibigyan ng atensyon yun? <coughs> Darating din tayo dyan. Bakit? Kasi kailangan unahin ko muna to. Bakit? Eh kasi ano mag- makakain mo ba yung Bible mo na yan? Yung pagiging mga spiritual mo, yan ba? Pwede ko, pwede ko ba iahain sa mga anak ko yan? Maging practical ka naman. Mami, gusto ko mag-serve kay Lord. Anong serve kay Lord? Unahin mo muna yung practical. Maghanap buhay ka na muna ngayon. Pag okay ka na, na-establish ka na, maganda na yung buhay mo, saka ka mag-serve. Darating din tayo dyan. Young person would say, alam mo, ay- ayoko nang ano eh, gusto ko na talaga i-devote yung sarili ko sa ano, nag-aaral na ako at lahat, pero mal- malinaw yung calling ko, I, w- I want to serve God. Ano serve God? Ano kakainin mo? Ano ang papakain mo sa mga anak mo? Maging practical ka naman, puro ka spiritual. Now, there's no snake. Around. Walang aas na nagsasalita. Walang diabolical laughter. <laughs> Unain mo mo ng hanap buhay mo. <laughs> Walang ganon. Instead, you have thoughts. Unain ko muna yung karir ko. Unain ko. Ayusin ko muna yung ano. Pag medyo maganda na yung buhay ko, established na ako, Saka ako nalang isipin yung mga ganyang bagay. Kasi sabi ng nanay ko, kailangan unahin muna yun eh, no? ba? Diba? Ano pa pakaya ko sa pamilya ko? Verses? Maging practical ka naman, ano? Unahin mo muna yan. Mag- mag-abroad ka muna. Pag marami ka ng pera, tapos talagang nasus- na- nasuporta mo na kami lahat. Pati yung mga, you know, pangatlong pinsan mo sa kaduluduluhan ng ano, ng... Pag naparal mo na lahat ng tao, pag, pag may kotse ka na, may, may bahay na tayo sa isang magandang subdivision, when, when everything is okay, na, na, nabili mo, nadala mo na ako sa abroad, pag okay na, then, then, think about God. Walang ahas. Walang diabolical laughter. All you have are just thoughts in your mind. And you listen to it. You say, oh nga naman. Oh nga naman. Tama. Oh nga naman. Oh nga naman. Tama. So if somebody approaches you, Pastora Gina, uwe, mag-serve ka naman. So, Pastora, pasensya ka na. Darating tayo dyan. And here's how Jesus answered. It is written, sabi ni Jesus, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Na hungry siya, gutom siya, yung physical needs niya are so real sa kanya at that point in time. Ang sinasabi sa kanya ni Satan, come on, okay, be, be practical. Ayan ang mga bato, convert to ensaymada. Very easy. And it will not be hard on the part of Jesus to do that. Pero alam ni Jesus ko na yung deception. Alam niya yung kasinungalingan. So sabi ni Jesus, you will not deceive me because it is written in the word of God that man shall not live on bread alone. Ibig sabihin, ang buhay ng tao is not simply coming from food or physical things. Sabi ni Jesus, here's the truth. Galing mismo from God Almighty, ni-reveal niya sa tao, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Wala na ba ibig sabihin niyan? Mag-Bible study ka na lang palagi. Hindi po yan ang ibig sabihin niya. We have to go back to the book of Deuteronomy to understand kung ano talaga yung kinukote ni Jesus. So Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 to 5, here's what we find, these words. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today. Now the context ito is, pinalaya ni God si Yahweh, pinalaya niya ang Egypt, uh, Israel from Egypt, okay, through mighty miracles, and they crossed the Red Sea and all of that, hanggang sa nando na sila, malapit na sila sa promised land. So God is saying, okay, 40 years na sila naglalakbay, malapit na sila ngayon pumasok doon sa, sa promised land, and so God is speaking to Israel. Sabi niya, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today, so that you may live. Now, hindi niya please eat all the food so that you may live. Sabi niya, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live. Listen carefully. Your life mo does not depend on effort mo, kung gaano ka kasipag, kung anong trabaho mo. No, it doesn't depend on that. It, do, it does, does not depend sa effort mo para masustain mo yung life mo. Sabi niya, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase. Yung kasaganaan mo sa buhay, yung success mo sa buhay, does not depend on you. Amen? Akala mo ba sa pagpupursigin mo, mararating mo yung ano? No, it depends on God. Sabi niya, and you, you may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on, on oath to your ancestors. In other words, the context ng passage na ito kinukot ni Jesus is Deuteronomy. At dito sa Deuteronomy, we find na sinasabi ni God, Yahweh, sa Israel, If you want to experience real life, you've got to pay attention to the most important thing. And it's not food. It's not something practical. It's something that's spiritual in nature. Listen to my words. And then it goes on. Remember how the Lord, your God, led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years. So the Moses inspired by the Holy Spirit, sabi niya sa Israel, Alalahan ninyo how long we've been doing this. Now, 40 years, mga kapatid. How many of you can count 40? Present kayo nang tinuro yung 40? Okay, hindi kayo present. Absent kayo, tinuro yung 40? 40 years. Tagal na pa naman yun. Sabi niya, remember that. To humble and to test you, sabi ni Moses. In order to know what was in your heart. So there was a process na pinagdaanan nila to, to bring out what was in their heart. Whether or not you would keep His commands. Now, minsan may mga delay sa buhay natin. Minsan naiinip nga tayo kay Lord. Eh. Minsan we are praying, Oh God, Oh God, please, Oh God, Oh God. And then God doesn't answer it. And minsan nagagalit tayo kay Lord. But God is always, you know, a God of perfect timing. Pag hindi niya pinigay sa isang bagay right now, it's because hindi pa dapat ngayon. But oftentimes, nare-reveal yung heart natin kasi nagiging impatient tayo and we blame God and we say, God, you know, hindi mo naman sinasagot yung prayer ko and we try to do our own thing. Pag natatakot ka kasi, di ba, sometimes you take action eh, di ba? For example, a, a, a lady who's praying the Lord, sana bigyan mo po ako ng papangasawa ko, yung God's will, you know, tall, dark, and handsome, please, Lord, saka godly. Eh, lumilipas yung panahon, panahin, panahihipan mo ng birthday cake. You know? oh, tumatagal na, you're becoming afraid, so sana change ka na ng prayer, Lord. Sige, wag na yung godly. Tall, dark, and handsome. Sige, kahit na godly, sishare ako na lang kahit godly. Okay? And then, lumipas na naman yung panahon, hipa ka na naman ng birthday cake. Happy birthday to... You know, bisa maging masaya kung naluha ka na. Kasi, you know, yung numero mo sa kalendaryo, pawala na ng pawala. 
And so after I was having Lord, wag na lang tall, dark and handsome, tall, dark na lang. Hindi pag tagal tagal, Lord, Lord tall. Eh ngayon medyo pumuputi na yung book mo, Lord, kahit na sino na lang, basta buhay! And when we are afraid, we begin to take matters in our own hands. Pag di mo makuha yung trabaho na gusto mo, you become impatient and you get the job that is offered na mukha naman maganda even though it will lead you far away from God. The reason is because you're afraid. You're no longer trusting God. So sometimes mayroong delay. And you need to trust God. So sabi niya dito, You know, He humbled you, causing you to hunger. And then feeding you with manna. So, pinahinayaan ng Panginoon na magutom sila. And then, nagre-reklamo sila, gutom na kami. Gusto namin bumalik sa Egypt. Gusto namin yung mga onions sa Egypt. You know, fried onions, tinolang onions, lahat na klase ng onions. Kasi sa Egypt, yun ang paborito nila onions. Kaya huwag kayo mag-ipag-usap sa mga Egyptian. Ba't ko sinabi yun? Anyway. So he humbled you, sabi niya ganoon. And, and yung, mga, yung mga tao, reklamo sila, reklamo. So God gave them mana. Which neither you nor your ancestors had known, uh, you know, to teach that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So binigyan sila ng Lord ng mana. Now yung mana, ibig sabihin ng mana is, ano ba yan? Or what is it? Kasi nung nakita nila yung pagkain, ano yan? So next time may magluto sa bahay niyo na parang hindi niyo alam kung ano yung niluluto nila, sabi mo, mana. <laughs> parang hindi halatang nasusukmal, nasusuk, nasusuklam ka, di ba? Okay. Kasi offense ito pag sinayang, pangit naman, pangit, di ba? Ano yan? Yeah, ba't may gumagapang-gapang? Yan ang nakaka-offend yun. So sabi mo nalang, para biblical ka, mana. Okay. So, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word, in a context, that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And then he goes on, sabi niya, your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Now, they've been walking for 40 years. Iba nga sa atin, ng 40 minutes, masakit yung paa, you know? They were walking for 40 years. And sabi sa kanila ni God, please remember, so 40 years na yon, hindi ko kayo ginutom. Hindi na magaampaan ninyo. Why? Because I care for you. Stop doubting my love. So sabi niya, man does not live by bread alone. Ibig niya sabihin, don't be afraid. I will bring you to the destination that I said I will bring you. It does not depend on us. You see, kahit gano'ng kakalakas, kumakain ka na sa katebang vitamins, di ba? may pula, may asul na vitamin, you know, lahat, you know, uh, you know, complete, you know, incomplete, lahat ang ininom mo, lahat. You know, exercise ka, running ka, it does not depend on you. No, sure, dapat mong gawin yun, di ba? I mean, wag ka naman parang may mapangahas na kain ka ng kain ng mga balat ng manok doon sa may HBC, you know, in Jesus' name, God will take care of me. You know, wag mong gawin yun. Panayang pila mo doon sa mga, yung mga kulay itim na barbecue na pag sausaw ng lahat na may mga cholera, sausaw ka rin, you know? So, ah, God will take care of me. Na hindi ganun. Pero normally speaking, okay, listen, normally speaking, may purpose kasi si Lord sa'yo eh. And for as long as hindi mo pa natutupad yung purpose na yun, you will stay here on earth. Okay? I mean, kahit na nagugutom ka minsan, para wala kang kakainin, don't worry. God will take care of you. Now, pagtapos na yung purpose mo sa mundong ito, kahit ang lalaki ng katawan mo, sasabihin sa'yo ng Panginoon, okay, finish or not finish, pass your paper. It does not depend on you. Your life does not depend on you. So, sinasabi ni Lord sa Israel, stop worrying. Man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God, if I say that you will live, you will live. Eh, hey Lord, wala na ako makain. You will live. Eh, hey Lord, wala na ako You will live. Eh, hey, ano mga nga sa'yo? Mamatay kami. Ibigay kami ng buldosa. You will live. If God says you will live, you will live. Know then in your heart, sabi, that as a man disciplines his son, So the Lord, your God, 
disciplines you. Ilan sa inyo mga magulang dito? Alright? Now, alam mo, mga magulang, kahit gaano kayo kagulang, pag ang mga anak nyo nagugutom, wala pa ako nakitang parents, siguro bihira yan, yung mga nakukuha sa CCTV, no? bihira yan. Pero if you're a parent, a normal parent, nakita mo nagugutom yung anak mo, you will do everything para mapakain siya. Right? I mean, imagine mo yung, yung, kung meron kayong anak, tapos sasabihin sa inyo, ginagutom niya ako, tinay niya mamamatay na ako. Oh. Di ba bang magulong ka? Don't say that. Ah, kahit mamatay ako, I will do everything para mapakain ka. Amen? Kaya kayo mga kabataan, you should be thankful. Lalo yung mga matataba sa inyo. <laughs> Dahil di kayo pinababayaan ng magulang nyo. Pinababaya kayo sa kusina. <laughs> now listen. I want to finish this now. Listen carefully. Yan yung context na sinabi ni Jesus. So if we go back here, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, in contrast sa deception ni Satan, sabi ni Satan ganito, yan yung sinasabi niya sa inyo, saka na yan, mga spiritual na yan. Saka na yan, mga equip, equip, grow, grow, enroll, enroll. Ano ba? Ayusin mo na muna yung karir mo. Ayusin mo na muna yung trabaho mo. Pag okay ka na, stable ka na, ayos na yung buhay mo, may chikot ka na, nagdadrive ka dito. Pagpasok mo dyan sa ROCC, toto, halika, webbing out tayo. Nox naman. Then, pag okay na lahat, may pera ka na sa banko, secure ka na, then think about spiritual things. Well, here's what Jesus has to say about that. Real life is spiritual. Not just physical. Yung totoong buhay, yung buhay talaga na inaasa mo sa puso mo magkaroon, it is not physical. Yung life talaga na hindi design ng heart mo, yung magkaroon ka ng joy and peace and fulfillment. Are you listening? Yung buhay na kung saan, hindi ka natatakot sa kinabukasan. Yung buhay na meron kang kapayapaan sa puso mo anytime, pwede ka kunin ni Lord because you know you're walking with God. Yung buhay na yun, that is spiritual. That is not physical. So kahit na masang katerba ng pera mo sa banko, kahit ang tasang na rating mo sa karir mo, kahit ang okay na okay ka sa mundong ito, kapag spiritually, wala ka sa ayos, wala ka pa rin sa ayos. It's not true na darating ka doon. In fact, I've known, I've known so many people who say that. Pastor, saka na muna yung mga ano, ah, seminar, seminar. Ah. Darating tayo dyan. Alam mo, na-discover ko, hindi sila dumarating. In fact, lumakpas na yung bus. Naiwan na. I, I've known many believers through many years of ROCC. I've known many Christians. And nakakagulat, minsan makikita mo, same batch, para paraho sila na born again, and then you will see only some would actually grow and be used of God. The rest will just stand still at iiwanan sila ng panahon. And then maybe you're in that kind of situation. Titinan mo yung mga kasamahan mo, di ba? You remember the day, basang-basa kayo sa swimming pool, <laughs> nag-iiyaka kayo, oh, tinagap ko na si Jesus. <laughs> you know, and five years later, here you are. Andiya ka pa rin. Tapos yung mga kasamahan mo na water baptized are now cell leaders, serving God, being used by the Lord. And you're saying to yourself, bakit sila ganun? Because naniwala ka kay Satan. Nakakala mo mas importante yung mga practical na bagay kesa yung spiritual. In fact, even now siguro, there are some of you, wala masyadong lugar sa yung spiritual right now kasi iniisip mo later na lang. There are some of you here, busy-busy ka sa work mo, halos hindi ka na makapag-quiet time. Busy-busy ka sa mga ginagawa mo, halos hindi mo na mabuksan yung Bible mo. Hindi ka nag-grow sa faith mo. Lahat ng mga seminars na babalita mo, lumalakpas, hindi ka sumasali. Kasi may mga bagay kang pinapa, binibigyan ng halaga. But let me tell you something. Don't believe the lie. Because the lie of Satan sounds like a promise. But in the end, madi-discover mo na it was wasted time. 
mamimiss mo lahat yung opportunities. Because really, mga kapatid, those of us who are older right now, alam natin, there was once a time na young tayo. Samahan nyo naman ako, taas na kamay, those who were once upon a time young. Thank you, hindi nyo ko iniwan. And how I many of you are still young? Okay. Yung iba, kailangan nyo mag-confess at mag-repent. Hindi kayo young. Okay. But anyway, sige, by faith. How many of you think you're still young? All right. I have good news for you. You have lots of strength. God can use you mightily. You will, you can do great things for the kingdom of God. Amen? Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Now, listen. I have bad news for you. You will not be young forever. One day, gigising ka, hindi ka tulad ng dati, pag dilat ng mata mo, tayo ka na agad. One day, pag tayo mo, may seremonya. Kasi hihintay mo muna dumaba yung mga dugo bago ka makatayo. Tapos papunta ka sa kusina, lahat sa mga sakit, pati mga parte hindi mo alam na nag exist One day, it will happen. You are not young forever. And you do not have all the time for you to say, darating tayo dyan. Because you don't know that. What you do know is that now you have the time. So mamaya, pagkatapos ng service, you go straight to that table. And you enroll sa equip. And stop saying, darating din tayo dyan. Hindi ka darating. May iiwan ka. Now is the time. Habang meron kang lakas at meron kang energy. Now is the time to serve the Lord. Huwag mo sabihin sa akin na unahin mo muna yung practical. No, unahin mo yung spiritual. Yung practical, darating sa iyo. You know, as a testimony, and with this, I would like to end. When I decided to serve God way back when I was 22 years old, 22 ako noon, I decided to follow the Lord. I struggled kasi sa heart ko, I knew that God wanted me to go full-time natatakot ako because all my friends and relatives were telling me, mamahamatay ka dyan, magugutog ka dyan, ano yung papakain mo sa mga anak mo? Bible? And I was listening to those lies and I, I was afraid. So it took me from 1992 to 1988 to decide. That was six years of my life wasted. Kasi nagdadalawang isip ako, natatakot ako to serve God. Kasi iniisip ko sa nakukuha ng kakainin ko. But well, finally I decided. Sabi ko, Lord, I don't care if I die. I'd rather die serving you than die or live not serving you. So simula noon, I set my face like a flint. I went to Bible school. I studied. I equipped myself. And I said, I will serve God. Naalala ko noon, nung bata pa kami ni Pastor Regina sa ministry para makakain kami magpipray kami para meron kaming konting pera. So, magbabible study kami, hindi namin alam kung may maglalove gift sa amin. Pag may naglove gift sa amin, bibilangin namin, kasya lang sa isang chicken joy. Hati kami, mas marami sa kanya kaysa sa akin. And we live each day. Minsan, pag pupunta ako sa Bible study ko, wala akong pamasahe. So, I'll walk. Because I know God will take care of me. And He has never failed His promise. Today I stand before you as a testimony that God is faithful and He will never leave you nor forsake you. Ang sinasabi ko to, hindi para mag full time kayong lahat. Sinasabi ko to for you to understand. Kaya ni Lord alagaan yung mga tao nagtitiwala sa Kanya. At hindi mo kinakailangan i-compromise ang spiritual life mo para lang mabuhay. Because the truth is, yung buhay mo nakasalalay sa Kanya. Amen? So I hope that you will be set free from that fear. And starting today, huwag ka maniwala sa lie ni Satan. It's not true. 
It's not true na mapapa, mapa, mapapano ka pag, pag hindi mo inisip yung mga practical. It's not true. God will provide for your needs more than you can ever imagine. Balansin mo lang yung buhay mo. Pagkatapos itong worship service, dire-direcho ka sa table na yun. Huwag kang liliko. Sabi mo nga, huwag kang, sabi mo sa katabi, huwag kang liliko. Dire-direcho ka hanggang tumama ka sa pader. And talk to PM and tell PM, PM, I want to grow in my faith. Stop playing Christian. Maging seryoso ka sa follower of Jesus. Grow in your faith. Be used of God. So many people are dying without Christ. Stop focusing on yourself. Stop taking pictures of yourself as people post most of Facebook. Share your faith. And become fruitful for the kingdom of God. Amen? Itigil ako na sarili ko, baka mapapreach pa ulit ako. Can you stand up?